Hi, I'm Rupert from Bonus Level Entertainment, and I'm the game director of Saga of Sins. So Rupert, talk about where the idea for this game came from originally. Uh, well, since I'm a child, I've been a very big uh, fan of the Dutch painter Hieronymus Bosch from the late 15th century. And so after our first game, Fox and Forests, when I was uh, thinking, you know, what should the next game is about, uh, I thought, you know, what game could fit into the universe of the Hieronymus Bosch paintings. And this is uh, how Saga of Sins was born. Yeah, so like, let's talk about the gameplay. Let's talk about some inspirations and some goals you were trying to achieve with the gameplay overall. All right, so in Saga of Sins, you play as the righteous cleric Cecile, and he can enter the minds of people via transforming into demonic creatures, such as a werewolf or a gargoyle. And he's doing this in order to fight the seven deadly sins and thus free his plague-infested village of Sinwell. So, uh, yeah, the plague is an important topic in our game. Uh, and, yeah, once again, uh, if you take a look at the paintings of Hieronymus Bosch, you know, they're very, yeah, it's, it's crazy because on one hand, he, he made tripticons, like uh, paintings that uh, consist of three uh, uh, different uh, images that were used in, in, a in a church, you know, but uh, what he painted, like devils, demons, uh, flying fish, like fish with wings and, and people riding uh, riding his fish, uh, etc. So he had a lot of crazy ideas. So this was the main source of inspiration, uh, like from from the from the um, universe wise, right? Uh, but obviously, of course, there's like uh, the games we at Bonus Level Entertainment love that are always like, you know, uh, uh, games that, that we want to, you know, um, kind of kind of, uh, yeah, pre-tube pre -tube tribute too. And some of these games would be like Super Go uh, Ghosts and Goblins, of course, uh, then uh, Mega Man, uh, Egg Tracer 2. So these sorts of games that have like this, you know, cool medieval style to to to, to the game, but uh, they are still colorful. So I know in an elevator pitch, I would say, you know, Saga of Sins is like Mega Man meets the movie name of the roles, right? You know, yeah, the first thing I saw when I saw the trailer uh, was your, you mentioned the Dutch painter that you were inspired by. I'm not familiar with his work, but I got a very stained glass window feel from all the characters and levels. Like, was that, like, how did you achieve that design to make it look like stained glass? Like, I mean, was that how that artist painted? Like I said, I'm unfamiliar with his work, but it looks very stained glassy. Exactly. So, so that was, that was one of the, uh, you know, big ideas, or I would also say one of our, you know, uh, things to really uh, stand out from, 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 from the crowd is the stained glass art style. So we really want that the game looks like a moving stained glass window. Uh, uh, first of all, because it perfectly fits to the setting of the game. And second of all, it hasn't been done very often and never in an in a, uh, action adventure or action, um, uh, we call it story arcade game, uh, Saga of Sins before. Um, it was really tough, so we maybe underestimated it in the beginning because, you know, like we had to generate multiple maps per character because of the reflection, because of the, uh, uh, um, the textures. Then when the, when the character explodes, uh, of course, he shatters into pieces of glass. Or when you hit the character, like he gets cracks, right? So we have crack maps. And first he has a little crack. Uh, first you hit the character, there's a few cracks. Then he gets more cracks. And at the end, he shatters. So this whole stained glass uh, look was quite demanding, but uh, I'm very proud of the team and I'm happy with the result. Um, and another big part was, of course, the lighting in the game, which was also, uh, you know, very important to achieve this look. Yeah, I mean, I, I'm not a very reactive person. It takes a lot for me to, like, say something when I watch something. I'll be like, oh, that's really cool, but I won't, like, say it a lot. But when I was watching your trailer, when you showed the greed world or the greed level, I went, wow. Like, there was so much happening in the foreground and background. There was depths of field. There's a lots of, like, color everywhere. And I just was, like, taking it back. Like, yeah. talk about how you went designing. It doesn't have to be specifically greed, but the, the levels to give them all that sense of character without, uh, let me see, that, like, maybe, that's what I'm looking for, without uh, distracting the player from the actual platforms and the enemies. Uh, yes, this, this is uh, actually... Um was also a very hard task because uh, on one hand we wanted to have all the reflections going on and the lighting effects. On the other hand, uh, usually when you you know take a look at the at the golden age of of, of 
of Super Nintendo games and uh, and 2D games, then you see that usually the background is very like desaturated or dark, right, in order so that the gameplay area can stand out more. So, uh, but for us, of course, to have like to make the player really feel that he's playing the stained glass window, we sometimes have to compromise a little bit. Uh, that maybe sometimes, uh, yeah, uh, on the screenshot you would say that the, uh, the character and the enemies don't like distinct themselves so much from the background, but when the game moves, right, when it's moving, then it's really nice. So you can, you still feel like being inside a glass window while still being able to, you know, see who's, who are the enemies, who are the obstacles. And yeah, I mean, in regards to the seven daily sins, we just did brainstorming, right, to, to say, okay, now the next thing is, I don't know, uh, as, as you said, greed, right? Okay, obviously greed, what fits to greed, like gold, uh, treasure, loot, you know, and then the idea was born and, and that we put it into a, a kind of catacombs and we have, a, we have a, once again, great team of, of uh, graphic artists and, and coders and tech artists to then bring this, bring this to life. So it was really cool because every new daily scene was also a new process uh, and brainstorming and seeing you know what type of enemies would be there and uh, like of course you know when you start making a game you have like always a game's design document which is like huge where everything is already there but I think it's important that when working on the game that you you know you know when should I stick to the original idea and when is it better you know to integrate new stuff so for example in the greed level uh, we have like mini chests like treasure chests like that spawn um, dark coins so that's that idea was just uh, born was born out of a brainstorming session. And these dark coins, right, they subtract your goal. So when you as a player are too greedy and you play the greed that leads in, right, then make sure to not like widely collect all the gold because the dark coins, they actually subtract your goal. And, and we have a similar idea for envy, right? So for envy, we then said, okay, in envy, the, uh, the, um, enemies are envious of your of, of you and so they're trying to steal gold from you right so uh yeah so how big is your team including freelancers uh so the core team at bonus level entertainment is seven people and then uh yeah we outsourced uh, of course the music um uh, Filippo Beck made the music again who's who's did a lot of uh, amazing music already also for the mini mini games like shadow tactics and the uh, desperados and also made the soundtrack for fox and forests then we work with voice actors, uh, with Garrett and Bob, uh, and we, we worked with, uh, for the dialogues, we work with Subverse Narr Narrative, uh, which is also a great company doing outsourcing for, for story and dialogue. And uh, James was then the lead uh, uh, story author. So I'm also very proud of the dialogue in the game. I think it's super well done and also like, you know, I know the story, we have some nice twists in the story and some some nice, you know, inner conflict of the character, um, you know, a cleric entering the minds of innocent or not innocent villagers in the form of like a werewolf or gargoyle. So obviously, there's an inner conflict uh, uh, going on. And even though I've played the game, I don't know, or we, we all played the game like dozens or hundreds of times, uh, the dialogue is so well written and the VO uh, is so cool that you still, uh, you know, you still get excited. So I think it's pretty cool. What's the biggest challenge for you as an indie studio making a game out of the EU specifically? Like anything that stands out to you, you know, like anything you've learned from Vox and Forest that you've applied to Saga Sins. Like just talk about the overall challenges of being a small studio in a very overcrowded space. I think the last time I checked Steam, this was a couple of years ago, it was like 100 plus games per week coming out on Steam. Like what are the challenges for you to stand out and to look at that metric and be like, oh, geez, what can we do to make a make a really good game stand out from all the rest? Um so yes, the challenges are really enormous. So um, uh, it's cool to make indie games or making games was always our big dream, but they really need the passion. So I think if you, if you just see it as a regular job, then you will not come anywhere. Um, uh, so on one hand, we, we were very lucky because uh, in Germany, there's a very good scene for, for funding. So the game is fin financially supported by the FFF Bavaria and by the BMWK of the German government. So that was cool because you know then you already have some 50% uh, of the budget secured, um, and then uh, yeah with 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 just for games we found a really great publisher. It's incredible to work with just for games, and they're really passionate and believe in the project. 
as much as we do. So those challenges, like getting a budget together and finding a publishers, we were lucky to like uh, have having both secured. Uh, still, uh, as you said, it's a big challenge uh, uh, when you take a look at all the great games that come out, right? So even if you just play games for, for the rest of your life, you probably cannot, are not able to play all the good games, right? It's unbelievable. The physical so, impossibility. I've heard that metric before. You, <laughs> you'll, you'll die before you touch half of them. You know what I mean? Like I've heard that. Yeah. So, so, so I, I did, I did think at the very beginning that, you know, there are, there are some games uh, that you remember, right? So for example, uh, Limbo. Everybody remembers Limbo or Cuphead. Everybody remembers Cuphead or, or Child of Light, right? If you see a screenshot of Cuphead, everyone, even though, as you said, there are like dozens of games coming out every week. When you see a screenshot of Cuphead, you know this is Cuphead. So from the beginning on, having a unique art style was very important for us. And I'm happy that we found it with the stained glass book. And then Rupert, when does your uh, game come out? Do you have a release date? What platforms will it be on? Uh, yes, it will be out uh, end of March, so 30th of March, and it will come out uh, um, once again a challenge for indie dev, but we managed because we, we, we passed all submissions already. We're coming out on PlayStation 4, PlayStation 5, Xbox Series S and X, the Nintendo Switch, Steam, and Steam Deck. And I have to say, Personally, people know from Fox and Forest, I'm more a console gamer, but the game is absolutely stunning on Steam Deck too. Yeah, that's and that's that's a lot of platforms from an indie studio. Usually, it's like PC and one other platform, but you but you hit all, all the marks. You should you should have gotten some of that Game Pass money. <laughs> Ask Microsoft uh, for some Game Pass money. They could use a cool indie game on their on their list. <laughs> it's it's crazy, and I have to say, our lead coder. I mean, it was the first time that he was like doing a, a, a game like from A to Z uh, uh, and all the porting and he really managed. I mean, it's, for me, it's still a miracle. Uh, I tell him every day that he managed to do all the uh, porting for the platforms. We did get help from friends of us from Lab 132 for the PlayStation ports and they also you know, helped us with the knowledge. But yeah, it's, it's crazy. So it's really doable, uh, but uh, you know, you need a lot of, uh, you know, yeah, in a lot of passion and um, also dealing with all the bureaucracy uh, itself, you know, like it, it, it's great to work with Sony, Microsoft and Nintendo, but of course they all have the different system, there are different, you know, log requirements, checks, yeah. etc. So, so wow, uh, I'm very happy and really proud of our lead coder that he managed to do this. Um, and yeah, it looks like that we are really, you know, coming out in time, in budget and in quality. And then, yeah, I, I really hope that we will get enough, you know, visibility that people will also, you know, know about the game and then appreciate it and hopefully love it when they play it. And you have a demo out now on Steam so people can try the game right now if they want, right? Yes, exactly. The first chapter of the game can already be played on Steam.